Augustine's adulthood starts out with a kid and in a cult. The kid is his son, Adeodatus, which means gift from God. He has the son with his girlfriend, who remains nameless in his autobiography, but whom we may call Una, the One. The cult he is in is the sect of the Manichees. They use some religious vocabulary that sounds like Christianity, but it is different. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, but the Manichees saw that promise as fulfilled in the coming of their leader, Mani, in the 200s AD. At meetings, Manichees would cook spiced vegetables for their leaders. When the leaders burped, their followers thought it was angels coming out. When they threw up, it was like little pieces of God. I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds like a cult. Augustine's mom, Monica, is of course worried about her son. She begs a priest to debate with Augustine to try to reason him out of the cult. The priest says that it wouldn't do any good. He advises her to just let Augustine keep on reading and that one day he would come to see the light, especially considering how much she was weeping and praying for him. We might see in Monica a symbol of the church, waiting for a child to come home. Augustine begins to have doubts about Manichaeism after he meets one of their superstars, Faustus. Faustus comes to give a talk, but during the Q&A afterward, Augustine finds that Faustus isn't really able to answer his cues. And if Manichaeism is wrong about astronomy, for example, maybe it was also wrong about spirituality. Augustine begins to make his exit out of the cult. And also North Africa. Did I mention he lived in Carthage? He was a teacher of rhetoric, teaching his students how to give good speeches, as he did for a living. But he had heard that the students were better behaved in Rome, so he decides to head in that direction. Among the troubles of being a teacher in Carthage were the wreckers. They were bands of punk kids that would show up in classrooms and disrupt class. It sounds pretty fun, actually. I mean, as long as it wasn't your classroom. Sitting on the dock of the bay, Augustine is ready to move on to Rome with his girlfriend and son. And then Mom shows up. He persuades her to visit the Shrine of the Martyrs in Carthage, and then he dips. But Mom catches up to him in Rome. She has ambitions and plans for her son, one of which is to help him rise in the ranks of society. She sees Augustine's girlfriend as a hindrance to him. Possibly it's a class issue. She picks out someone else for Augustine to marry, a young girl. Surprisingly, Augustine does break up with his girlfriend. After 15 years, Augustine keeps their son, but imagines that the single life is ideal. Partly he is looking to the example of other philosophers, and he thinks it's for him. He thinks it's for him, but in practice, he can't keep away from the ladies. Within a week of breaking up with Una, he is with another woman, and not the one Mom picked out for him. This is the ultimate struggle for Augustine, how to stay single and continent. Meanwhile, he moves to Milan where he meets Ambrose, the bishop. They might not have actually talked that much in real life, but Augustine hears him preach. Through his preaching, he realizes that he can believe the Old Testament, and many of his intellectual struggles are resolved. However, he still can't seem to give up sex. Until one day, in a garden, there with his son and friend, he has an epiphany. He hears a child's voice saying, pick it up, read it, pick it up, read it. So he picks up his nearby copy of the scriptures, flips it open, and it's exactly what he needs to hear. Not in riots and drunken parties, not in eroticism and indecencies, not in strife and rivalry, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh and its lusts. Romans 13. Somehow this is just what he needs. He and his son are baptized by Ambrose, and he heads back to North Africa to be a pastor.